So this was a case back in 1987. It was January the 16th. Um, it was the day we were driving down from, uh, from, she from Sheffield, from Yorkshire, uh, to come to Kent. Um, it was a, a very bad winter. Uh, I don't think we've had a winter the, the same um, since then. Um, literally knee deep in snow. Um, and we'd arrived, um, begin to sort of think, you know, have we made the right choice decision here? Um, we arrived quite late at night um, and we decided, my, my, my wife and I, that we would sleep on it. Uh, and as I say, nine o'clock, eight o'clock the following day, or even sooner or uh, earlier, we got a knock on the door um, and they said, we've had this incident, uh, a young girl's been stabbed out at Minster um, and, and can you come along? All, the, all today, I've actually been looking for the photograph of the uh, of the knife that this individual used to, to stab you and Kathy uh, with. And uh, uh, it, it was a, I, I can't find it, but it was a very, very, uh, a little sort of potato knife, red handled, very, very sharp. Uh, and he'd stabbed poor Kathy so hard um, that he'd actually broken the uh, the blade. So the blade, blade and the handle had come, uh, come adrift. Um, some pictures you can see on the on the screen. Um, the top right is Kathy um, as she is now, uh, I think a 40 year old uh, woman. Uh, she's actually sitting on the wall um, that the, the offender pushed her over. Um, so 33 years on, that must really take some, some guts to actually sit on the wall and bring back all those memories. So the point of me mentioning this is, is that forensic science is, is important. Forensic science, if we don't get it right, um, has the impact, the uh, possibility of impacting lots of people's lives, letting offenders go free, uh, and, and really not providing any closure to, to victims. Uh, and, and the bottom right hand corner is the picture of uh, Kathy as she was at the time um, with Princess Diana. And you can see there that the, you've probably been reading the slide as we've gone along. Um, Mum blamed herself um, and as she walked to the shops, uh, a man had approached her and I'm sure we've all told, told our kids not to go, with, you know, not to talk to strange people, not to sort of talk to strange men, um, which she, she was actually quite good at doing, but to a uh, Kelvin Chapman, the, uh, um, the offender, uh, was not having any of it. Uh, that's the picture of Kelvin Chapman on the bottom right hand corner. Um, and. Uh, on the top right hand, uh, we've got an artist impression of what the, the, the young girl, what Kathy uh, said he looked like. Um, and again, just read some of the, the narrative. Um, I was calling for help. No one's coming for you. Uh, he pushed her head down so far that she was all crumpled up in the passage of Footwell. Um, he took out this knife. As I say, it's, it's a horrible knife. I was trying to give you an example of what it looked like. It's a, a small, very, very sharp potato knife that had broken. Um, and he, he'd stabbed the he stabbed you and Kathy to the point where uh, she thought she was going to die, uh, and he thought that she'd uh, he thought he'd, he'd killed her. Um, so that's Kelvin Chapman, the um, uh, the offender. Uh, he got uh, sixteen years in prison for, for that offence. So um, he's been out many years now. Um, uh, and so, again, just a little bit more of the story. Uh, she'd uh, managed to run away. Um, she was drenched in blood, as you can see there. Uh, this guy was, uh, as she says, like a madman, even at that age. She knew that he wanted to kill her. Um, and, you know, for a moment, let's just take a, a, a moment to just reflect on you know, what, what a young girl must have been feeling uh, and how it's absolutely vital that we do whatever we can using forensic science, using policing techniques uh, to make sure that we put these people uh, where they belong uh, behind bars. Uh, so she pretended that she, that she was dead, she crumpled up um, and he, he ran off, he kicked her in the head just for one, one last time. He thought uh, he'd killed her uh, and we in fact thought um, we we've had, thought she was dead. She actually did die I believe on the, on the way to the, the hospital and was resuscitated. Um, and all of this, as it says there, all of this, my, my sort of first day on the job. Um, and I, I know that we all, you know, have times when we, we're not actually quite sure what we're doing. First, you know, first day in a job. Um, that was certainly me. Um, and I'm the person, that's my course photograph at the time. That was back in uh, well, the, the latter end of 86, uh, 87. 
and I'm the guy at the back on the right hand side um, with a fringe in those days. Uh, so more of a fringe and less of a uh, the, the wide parting I, I suffer with now. Um, so that was the, the backdrop of, of the story. Uh, and we've been using these um, this year. Luke will probably tell you in a, in a moment how we've been using these stories to actually give some context to uh, to what we've been talking about in some of the, the, the fingerprint labs or some of the, the practical labs that we've been doing. Um, putting some context on it, putting some, some importance. This is why we're actually doing this. Uh, we're not just doing it for the, uh, for the sake of it. Um, so um, Kathy um, appeared to have died. She died on, on, the, way to, on the way to the hospital um, and thank God was, was brought back to, uh, back to life. Um, and the press um, very quickly um, released a, uh, a, photo, a photograph, uh, the name of Kelvin Chapman, the, um, the defender, the suspect at the time. Um, and so that's the, the background of the story. And hopefully now you'll see how important forensic science is, um, how important it is to absolutely get this right, you know, to get it right first time. Um, and this actual this is the actual exhibit taken from that was snatched from from Kathy when she was when she'd gone shopping for for mum um, back in 1987 all those 30 odd years ago um, and the bag had been snatched off her um, and perhaps you can see that there's the uh, the logo there's the writing on on the bag uh, but maybe you can see some some silver deposit uh, from well in fact all over the bag uh, but toward the top left hand corner of the, uh, um, the screen. Uh, that was a, a process we used in the day, uh, and it was a process for developing finger marks on uh, plastics. Um, it was a, pro a process called vacuum metal deposition. Um, and, and what that does is it, we, we evaporate gold and zinc in, in, a, in a vacuum chamber. Uh, we, uh, we have some mag magnets that go across the top of the, uh, at the chamber. Uh, and we fume this, um, this meat, this, this, uh, the two compounds, uh, gold and, uh, and zinc, um, and it will actually stick to, uh, um, to where the, the sweat mark was. Um, so you can see the, the finger marks, you can see how they're, they're marked up with um, where the, the actual finger marks were, were left. Um, you, you probably can't see the, the detail in a minute of them at the minute, but um, just believe me that they are there um, and they, they were identified. Um, but the quality of those marks you can probably see is, um, is not very good. Um, and it's interesting really that the vacuum metal deposition um, was really a spin-off of the, the automotive industry. Um, it was something that, uh, um, that we, we, we stumbled across by accident really. Um, and um, those of you who look, can look at dad's car and look at the, the reflectors in the uh, in the headlights, uh, we'll know that there's a, a chrome uh, reflective uh, coating inside the, the headlights. Um, and it was that process, that, that vacuum metal deposition process was the process at the time uh, that was used to, uh, to coat those, uh, those headlights. Um, and one day someone just left their, uh, seemed to have left their, their sort of finger marks on the, the plastic um, and it developed a fingerprint. So that's really how almost well, by accident um, that we found, um, you know, we found that, that it would adhere to the, um, you know, to the amino acids in, in sweat. So that was the, the technique at the time. Um, that was the tick then, and that's the actual exhibit that was, that was used. Um, coming in a little bit more up to date, um, we've now developed um, since then really um, super glue. Um, so those of you who've ever uh, use super glue every time I use super glue I get my, my fingers stuck to the tube um, and you can see you, you always can see that that's a white deposit that white deposit that's um, around the, uh, the, the tube uh, and certainly if you get your fingers on it uh, you can see that it actually leaves uh, an the impression of the, the finger mark um, and again we stumbled across that by accident so the point of me telling you this is that we use forensic science in the in, in at Kent um, to promote science. Um, forensic science at Kent is a forensic is, is a science course. Uh, it's deeply rooted in chemistry and in physical sciences um, and in DNA, but it's about science. 
uh, and, and using uh, forensic science really to, to inspire, to enthuse people, uh, but it is fundamentally a, uh, a science programme because we have to prepare you for, for the future. We have to prepare our young graduates for a range of opportunities, range of job opportunities. Um, so it's important that we have enough science in the middle uh, to, make, to allow people to become teachers. Uh, we've got police officers. Um, we've got people who have, have become medics, who've become doctors. Uh, we've got one of our gra past graduates in the medical school now. So depending on you know, where you want to go, you know, the, the sky really is your limit.